am down and oh my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burden be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more Welcome to Worship for All Saints Day. Rejoice, people of God. Praise the Lord. Let us keep the feast in honour of all God's saints, in whose victory the angels rejoice and glorify the Son of God. Our opening hymn 364, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, 364.
Let us pray. Living God, this is a day of blessedness when we take the opportunity to come together acknowledging the very presence of God in each and every place where we are, to give thanks for your goodness and grace. This is the day when we pause to take note, to see and know what is around us, and to give you thanks for your many blessings. We are blessed with life, the living, breathing life which is your gift to us. We are blessed with creation, the beauty and wonder of which is beyond our comprehension. We are blessed with love, the ability to give love and the joy of receiving it. We are blessed with the church, with the community of God's faithful people, with whom we are bound and in which we have our place. We are blessed with the gospel, with the salvation won for us by your Son, Jesus Christ. Living God, we are richly blessed, and so we pause and give thanks for your goodness and your grace. But above and beyond all, in all and through all, we are blessed by your love, a challenging love, a rebuking love, a healing love, an accepting love, a forgiving love. So we are blessed again when we can confess our failings and hear those words of love. Arise, sinner, and sin no more. So as your coat of blessedness is cast around us once again, may we be drawn closer to you in the warmth of your spirit. As the light of your blessedness shines upon us today, may we rise wakeful and watchful to share that blessedness with those around us. As the peace of your blessedness restores our very soul, may we rest in you, knowing our blessedness is deep and secure. These prayers we bring you in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. The great multitude in white robes. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength to be our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked, These in white robes, who are they, and where do they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen.
taken from Matthew 5 verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a hill and sat down. His followers came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Those who, people who know they have great spiritual needs are happy because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Those who are sad now are happy, because God will comfort them. Those who are humble are happy, because the earth will belong to them. Those who want to do right more than anything else are happy, because God will fully satisfy them. Those who show mercy to others are happy, because God will show mercy to them. Those who are pure in their thinking are happy because they will, bring, will be with God. Those who work to bring peace are happy because God will call them his children. Those who are treated badly for doing good are happy because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. People will insult you and hurt you they will lie and say all kinds of evil things about you because you follow me. But when they do, you will be happy. Rejoice and be glad because you have a great reward waiting for you in heaven. 
People did the same evil things to the prophets who lived before you. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be worthy of you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. A few years ago, a group of Christians from the United States visited war-torn Nicaragua. While there, a young man in their group was killed by the Contra rebels. This left the group confused and full of questions. On the next Sunday, a memorial service was held and from the altar, the priest said, the peace of the Lord be with you. And people from that congregation, Nicaraguan people, began to embrace the Americans and say paz or peace. These people who had suffered in so many ways were passing the peace of Christ. And during the communion service, there was a pause 
the congregation fell silent. Then someone called out a name and in one voice everybody respond, responded, Presente, present. Another name was called out. Once again the response, Presente. And during the service at least 20 names were called out and each time the same response, Presente, present. The minister leading the group of Christians did not understand what was happening until he heard the name Oscar Romero and then realised that all the names that were being called were the persons of people who had died and from that moment he joined in the shouting Presente! Present! Present used in the school children to answer the roll call at the Lord's table Present means in our midst, present with us, shouting presente, present, in that Nicaraguan worship service was a way of communicating and proclaiming the reality of the communion of saints. Although those named persons had died, their presence and their influence was still felt. Today we celebrate All Saints Day. We remember those persons who have influ influenced our faith development, whose presence is still felt in our lives, though they now rest from their labours. All Saints Day is the Church's day for remembering those who have led us on our way and who have moved on, a time to remember and to give thanks to God for those who have died in faith. With these thoughts in mind, go with me now to a mountain where Jesus is teaching and he begins to list those Beatitudes and they form the picture of the life of a saint. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The blessed ones who have gone ahead of us, who walk alongside us, who will follow on behind us, are the saints of God. Yes, some of them are big saints, we could say, canonised by the church. Your Saint Francis, your Mother Teresa, your Maximilian Colby. Far more of them, though, are your ordinary men and women who have been faithful in following the teachings, in sharing the love, and so are gathered up in the grace. Those people who have picked us up in our faith and carried us a while. Those people who have inspired us to be better than we would otherwise be. Those who still walk alongside us and show us the bigger picture of what it is to be a child of God. Think about those people. Name them in your heart. Name them aloud if you wish to. How about this for an image? In your mind's eye visualise a table, a table known to you. Maybe your kitchen table, maybe a more formal dining table, maybe a table in a workplace, a boardroom, or the coffee table at church. Imagine that table and imagine yourself sat at it. As you sit at that table, you notice that people are coming to join you in sitting around it. They are the people who matter to you, who influence you, a relationship with whom deeply affects your life. They may be alive or they may be dead already. They may be intimate contacts or people you have never met. They may be greater or lesser importance. But because they matter to you, 
they are part of you, forever at one with you. And they are round your table. And so they are for you, your communion of saints. So consciously or subconsciously, in specific ways or vague ways, sometimes without any particular knowledge that is happening, you commune with them. You sit round that table and you talk and you listen and you learn and you absorb from all those influences upon you. And like the prophets of old, you carry away what you need. Insight, clarity, direction, decision. Everyone has a table. Everyone has their saints. Everyone has their time of communion. Everyone is influenced. So I commune with my saints, still learning from what they have shared and continue to share. I am at one with them. And when those who are living this life pass from it, they still have their place at my table. Their influence does not diminish. Of course, in physical terms, many of those who have influenced me have now gone, but their influence and a new understanding of their relationship with me and the love and the vitality that goes with me most certainly has not gone. Sit quietly for a moment and ask yourself, who are the people around my table? Who matters? Who remains when death comes? And that, I believe, will make us look at the relationships that matter to us. In addition, there is this profoundly challenging thought. If we have people round our table, it is, of course, just possible. Indeed, I hope it is true that there are people who have us sitting around their table along with their heroes and saints. As we continue in worship, we acknowledge the presence of those many people who matter to us. In the roll call of our mind, we speak their names and hear them respond, presente, present. In God's love, no one is lost. We speak of our loss when a loved one dies, but they remain with us. They are never truly lost to us, for their love and their influence lives on as they remain around our table and gather around us that great cloud of witnesses, the communion of saints. Friends on earth and friends above, held in the everlasting love of God. So thanks be to God. Amen.
make me forget the truth All you ever wanted was my heart My heart, my simple heart To you that's all that really matters Why do I feel I have to reach Believe I have to rise John Bell and Graham Moore's version of For All the Saints in our hymn book number 746. For All the Saints. And let us pray. God of blessedness, we turn to you now with our prayers for others, seeking your blessing on all for whom we pray. You tell us, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so we pray for those whose spirit fails them, that they may be strengthened in their faith. For those whose poverty is physical, that they may have equal share in the fruits of your kingdom. For those whose outlook on life is poor, that they may have a glimpse of hope and purpose. You tell us blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So we pray for all cast down by grief from recent loss or deep-seated sorrow over many years, that they may know the comfort of hope 
the comfort of love, the comfort of new life. You tell us, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And so we pray for leaders and followers, for big people and little people, for proud and humble, that in acceptance and grace we might work together for the good of all. You tell us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. So we pray that we seek to live in that very righteousness, that we might indeed be filled with wonder and joy in this very place. You tell us, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. So let us forgive others that we might know and understood the true meaning of forgiveness. And you tell us, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So make our hearts pure within us, that we may know your love all the more. You tell us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. We pray for all who work for peace, peace in relationships, peace in communities, peace in politics, peace in places of conflict, peace for body, mind and soul, that all may see themselves and others as children of God. You tell us, blessed are the persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so we pray for the broken and despised, the marginalised and the downtrodden, the victims and the dispossessed, the refugee and the homeless. This kingdom, your precious kingdom, belongs to them. And as we pray for others, we pray also that you will hold us in that communion of saints, those who have been blessed and whose memories, example and closeness blesses us, even at this present time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
are closing him, 745, for all the saints who from their labours rest, 745. And the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and upon you and all those whom you have loved, now and always. Amen.
you.